Many thanks for staying with us this morning on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. This is usually the time where we go through the pages of the National Dailies. We call it Off the Press. And this morning we have fine two gentlemen who will be joining us to make sense of the peppers or the papers this morning. I mean, the big stories on the headlines. GD Johnson joins us this morning on Off the Press and Nika Gule as well. GD, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning to you, Mercy. And good morning to Nick. Um, and also all our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank God it's Friday. Yes, please. And Nika Gule, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning from Abuja, uh, federal capital of Nigeria. And good morning to Jide, uh, my co-panelist, and good morning, <laughs> our viewers. That's all right. Then let's start off with the uh, Nation newspaper, looking at the front page of the Nation. More banks close branches for lack of cash to pay customers. Uh, you want to ask if this is the uh, is a very rational action or decision to take. I mean, when the banks are all shut down, cash crunch bites harder. NSA scarcity affecting military operations. You also find another. SANs CBN must obey Supreme Court ruling. Varsities to close from February the 22nd. EFCC appeals contempt ruling on Bauer. Standing up for what's right, the North have spoken. These are the writers, or the big stories and the headlines you find this morning on The Nation. But we turn our attention to the Daily Sun newspaper. The Daily Sun says, polls, federal government directs closure of universities, orders. We are 90% ready for elections, Einek is quoted to say. 90% sounds like a pass mark. Take their money, give us your vote, Obi tells Nigerians. APC urges Buhari to respect Supreme Court order and directs Mayfield to comply. North will vote credible candidate Arawa Elders, a quarter to say, and Council of State meets today on narrow exchange. Federal government orders oil marketers to accept POS, mobile transfers, or face sanction. I mean, are we just not being very sensitive to the situation? And in most cases, I think that those who have rejected uh, the transfer and what have you all, or other means of transaction is usually because of the fraudulent activity and fraudulent behavior of some Nigerians. So some people have gotten to a point where they're fake, you know, an alert. So you do a transfer and then you find a way to just send it. I don't know how that works, but uh, that's the case. And that's why some persons have not. But in other times, uh, if you look at other times, the network has not been favorable because, I mean, you have to carry a transaction and that doesn't happen just in space. You need a very favorable internet connection to carry out all of that. APC planning to hack INEX server. Tambuwal alleges all of these allegations should be taken seriously. Ruling party fighting for old notes to buy votes. That's what the PDP is saying. Three G, five governors absent. Three of uh, the G5 governors absent uh, at the setting meeting. I think there seems to be some sort of movement now. Well, we, we have another one saying governor, government handover... You have the SGF heads transition council as Buhari signs executive order uh, 14. Soldiers feared killed, monarch beheaded as violence erupts in Delta community. Uh, we move away from the Daily Sun. The punch is here. The punch says, new Naira confusion deepens as CBN deadline ends today. I remember putting out that question yesterday to my guests on the show. What becomes of Nigeria? Because... I mean, we, people are wondering, what do we now do? Spend the old note? Don't spend the old note when you don't have the new note. President CCB and silent on Supreme Court ruling. Banks, customers await a Mephili's directive. Buhari's seven-day promise expires. Nigerians queue in vain at ATMs and banking halls. Federal government will comply with Supreme Court ruling. That's what the Attorney General of the Federation is quoted to say. And TUC threatens to sue government over scarcity. One dies in Lagos Ibadan road crash, that unfortunate accident that happened. It was a hawker that died. Very saddening. Buhari orders setting up transition panel 
on Valentine's Day, 14th of February. Federal government sanctions 302 broadcast stations, issues 67 new licenses, and government vows penalty for fuel marketers rejecting POS transfers. Uh, would you really blame them? Not necessarily POS, but you know the USSD transfers. And uh, I think we have to move away. VCs ask to disagree as federal government shorts varsity. Oh, that's that's interesting. Council reviews training as 14,000 nurses or nurses uh, join the jackpot train. That's what you find. Uh, you have this day newspaper now. Malami, federal government will obey Supreme Court ruling against banning old Naira notes and moves to vacate order. Still on the D state newspaper, Basaki to Erufai, not all 36 states are against cash exchange deadline. Buhari creates presidential transition council and signs executive order 14. And I have to leave it at that. So we have, uh, I guess this morning, shared your thoughts on the issue. Uh, let me start off with G.D. Johnson. G.D., thank you once again for joining us. But what are your thoughts? The president yesterday well, um, signed an executive order 14 uh, to ensure a smooth transition from his uh, you know, administration to the next. Well, um it is, it is a norm. It's a constitutional requirement. There is no need for any executive order or uh, executive order. But in any case, it's just sending the sending the right signal like that uh, this government intends to to leave by May 29, and that this government is committed to a transition a program. Because you know, in the last few weeks, we have had different types of issues and cries with respect to tenure elongation interim national government. And I think with this um, decision, the president has been able to nip that in the board. So for me, it's, it's a welcome development and um, it's, 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 it's the step in the right direction. But I think if you are talking in terms of things of urgent national importance, I think this is of least concern to Nigerians now with respect to what is going on within the country. The major concern for Nigeria uh, how, they are, how to assess their, their, their funds, their deposit in the bank, which they, can, which they can have access to. But that decision is a welcome decision. Nick Agule, to set up. All right, then. And Nick, what do you make of this, uh, you know, executive order by President Muhammad Buhari? President Buhari has at every point here in Nigeria at the UN and other interactions he has had elsewhere, uh, has been very firm in terms of his commitment to a transition program in handing over to a new government that we Nigerians will elect in precisely two weeks from now. And this executive order is giving effect to what he has been saying. And so it's a positive move, and I commend the president for standing resolutely, resolutely for democracy. I don't agree with him on most things, but for this one, I'll commend him uh, because he is taking the right steps to ensure that there is an orderly and smooth transition come 29th of May, 2023. That's this year. Well, and another on, you know, the Punch newspaper, let's turn attention to that, is that uh, the new Naira note, there seems to be confusion and it has deepened as the CBN uh, deadline ends uh, today. Uh, that's what the punch is quoted to say. Today is actually the 10th of February. <laughs> so I remember yesterday someone reached out to me. I was asking, I mean, are we still going to use the old Naira? What's going to happen? So, but, but the federal government is also quoted to say that they will comply with the Supreme Court ruling. That's according to the AG of the Attorney General of the Federation. Uh, uh, when you juxtapose that with their previous position of saying the Supreme Court lacked jurisdiction uh, for that particular ruling. Uh, share your thoughts quickly before we have GD join us as well. So... It's a bunch of confusion. You know, we, we keep talking about leadership in Nigeria. Uh, there is a, a deficit in leadership in Nigeria. And that is because not, not everyone is a, is a leader. There are born leaders. And there are people who can also, through training and indoctrination over time, become leaders. Uh, Nigeria, unfortunately, 
is saddled with those who should be followers, those who should have nothing to do with leadership, uh, they find themselves into leadership positions. And that is the situation that we find ourselves with this currency swap or changing in color of the Naira. You can see that there was lack of uh, uh, preparedness on the side of the CBN. There was lack of planning. There were no adequate arrangements in place. They just rushed this currency swap. It looked to me like something that somebody uh, slept, probably dreamt about it, or had some sort of brainwave and say, oh, wow, it's a good idea. Let's go and do it. And then without any adequate planning and preparation, they just hoisted this pain on Nigerians. And uh, Nigerians have had to sleep at uh, ATMs uh, to try and, and change their money. Nigerians are now having to pay up to 40% premium in terms of getting money. As in, like, you want 10000 you are being forced to pay 4000 and this is all coming from leadership failure at the highest levels. The central bank governor is carrying on like a demigod. The president, who is his boss, is there watching him doing nothing. The other half of the economy, which is the fiscal policy led by the finance minister, uh, she came out to say that she was not even aware of what the other long, which is monetary policy uh, being run by the CBN, was doing. So as we stand now, the, the CBN state the currency is going to uh, currency swap will end today. Uh, a central bank ruling says it will have to continue. We don't know what's going to happen, but I let, believe that. Uh, let, let's ask uh, Jide Johnson. I mean, let's yeah. let's go to G. Uh, I beg your pardon. Yes, of course. Let's go to Jide Johnson and find out what he thinks. Uh, Jide, what what do you think would happen? Of course, the federal government is in support of. Uh, the compliance with the Supreme Court ruling, according to the Attorney General of the Federation. Uh, but the CBN is yet to be, uh, I mean, is yet to say, is yet to say anything about this uh, ruling from uh, the Supreme Court. What exactly should Nigerians do at this point? This is not open for a debate. The Supreme Court has ruled with, by extending it by seven days. So, as far as the deadline given by the central bank, by the extant laws of Nigeria, does not succeed. It's what the Supreme Court has ruled, and that's um, um, on the 17th, until the year, the, the, the case. So, as far as I'm concerned, every Nigerian should go about their normal business. They should still accept the old, the old, the old currency. In actual sense, where can you even get the new currency? I knew how much... You see, until we humanize this story, that's when we drive home the point. I knew how much I paid in the course of this week to collect old Naira notes when I couldn't access the banks because the bank's doors were shut. There were no money on the ATM. I have exclusive footage, recordings, myself that I did, that I asked my staff to do with respect. And I can share with your station with what happened at the regional branch of of, of a bank. On Monday morning, I was a witness to, 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 to the chaos created by this, by this policy. You can have good intention, you can have good policy, but if the execution is poor, you have these challenges we have. And the closing question I asked is, this in that footage, who is deceiving who? Central bank or the commercial banks? Because, you see, you hear something from central bank, and then you go to the bank, you see something contrary. So, there seems to be a missing link, and we don't know what the missing link is. And the missing link can only be solved by the president. However, in coming up with policy of this nature, what the federal government should have done, is, what the executive should have done, is to have called for a council of state. Now, they are not calling the council of state. They are scheduling the council of state to the to, to day when the, 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 the supposed deadline will have expired. I don't know, I don't know who is advising who are the counselors to the president when it comes to his policy direction? I don't know. And it, it boils down to leadership that Nick pointed out. There seems to be no leadership at CBN. There seems not to be leadership at, at, at the executive council level because this issue should have been drawn to their attention. I knew how much I have paid. Every Nigerian has lost his value on his currency. We are now buying our own currency. We are buying it. 
with your own paying premium value. For you to get 10,000, you pay 2,000. In some places, it's 3,000. So you have 10,000. The value of 10,000 actually in your bank is 8,000, even if you get it. And I don't understand. And I have asked this question. Whose money? Is it my money? Or can I go to the bank to make a withdrawal if I don't have a deposit? Government does not have a right over the control of my money. I should assess. It's a fundamental human right. What they are doing is an impeachable offense if you have a strong institution, a strong institution like the legislature, because you are denying people access to their fund, to their means of livelihood. It's a criminal offense. And we just live with it as if it's, it's normal. It's my money that is at the bank. I can't go to the bank to ask for a withdrawal if I don't have a deposit. So why don't I have right to my money? Okay. It's a question we should be asking. Well, we will continue to ask that until we get answers. I mean, it, so far, it doesn't look like we have answers to, you know, some of the questions that we have raised. However, I'd like us to turn our attention again to another headline on the Punch newspaper. The Academic Staff Union of Universities have condemned the directive of the National University Commission to condemn, I mean, to uh, the committee or vice chancellor of Nigerian universities that uh, universities should be short to enable students to participate in the forthcoming general elections. Yes, they reading through the headlines. I mean, looking at the comments, Nigerians were very excited. Uh, I mean, you could hardly see any comment that was uh, ill thought that uh, there were directed from the federal government to short varsities or universities for the time being for the elections. But uh, it feels like the academic staff union of universities feel differently uh, and, and, and are not very comfortable with this arrangement. I'd like you to respond to that. W what do you think? Well, um, Messi, it's, it's sometimes some people still think that we are in the military regime. At least that decision should have been left for each council of each institution to come up with a decision with respect to that. Not a sweeping directive by the Ministry of Education. And then was there a wider consultation? That's why you are seeing that also. And you are even asking the student that you, have, you kept at home for more than a year last year to stop academic activities in order to, to participate in the electoral process. Participating in the electoral process is voluntary. It's not something you can enforce. It's the right to vote and the right to be voted for. It's, it's, it's something I can participate if I want to, and I might not participate if I don't want to. So closing this, closing the schools that does not guarantee the full participation of, of, of these students you are sending home in the first instance. Because what what is the level of voters' education that you have done? What is the level of mobilization that you have done to that effect? And how even would they be interested in voting? Where are they? These schools you are closing. Where are the students going to get money to go back home? As okay. far as I'm concerned, some st some people still think that we are in a military regime where somebody can sit down somewhere and give a sweeping directive and you okay. must comply. Well, well um, Nick Agule, you're here with us. Yes, I'm with you. So, what are your thoughts? I mean, it felt like Nigerians were clamoring for. It feels like uh, the government had responded to the cry of Nigerians and the call that uh, schools should be short because a lot of people started saying, e e if ASU had to go on strike for that time, you know, put the school on short. I mean, how many days do we have for the, for the students to just take a break? Because a lot of them had registered at home. And how, how long would it take? What does it mean for one week, two weeks out of the academic calendar to be part of the electoral process? But Jide has raised a very valid question. The elections, I mean, voting is not compulsory. It's, it's your choice. I mean, it's within your, it's, it's a civic responsibility. It's your right to vote, but it's not that you, it, it's under uh, any sort of obligation, not obligated like us. There has to be a law, it's compulsory that you have to vote. So, uh, based on you know this uh, preposition, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, I agree with my co-panelist on the one hand. I also disagree with him on another hand. On the side that I agree with him is that yes, uh, there needed to have been wide-ranging consultations and adequate notice given uh, by the government so that universities 
shape their programs, taking into consideration the fact that elections are going to hold. So this last minute order that has been made by the government smacks of a military regime. So I agree with my co-panelist on that part. On the part that I disagree with him is the fact that the problems we're talking about, even the eight months that students stayed at home, and in fact, in the last eight years, students have stayed at home for longer than they have been in the classroom. The solution to that problem is the ballot. It's at the ballot that we're going to elect leaders that are going to give due attention to education. And so if uh, uh, we're talking about two weeks uh, of staying at home, is it two weeks of staying at home so that we get leadership right, solve the problem permanently that is the issue of staying at home for eight months? Because if we're going to bring into office those who don't understand the value of education, there will be another eight months of staying in the office. So political participation, especially by the youth, should be encouraged. We want the youth to come to the ballot. Nigeria is for them. It, they are the future of Nigeria. They are the ones who will bear the brunt of getting it wrong at the leadership recruitment. So whatever it is that will encourage those who need to step forward to vote must be done. We cannot leave it as, uh, uh, we, in fact, we should get to a point where we should have legislation to make voting compulsory in Nigeria. Because all of us are complaining. We are here on TV complaining. But when the time comes for us to solve that problem, which is leadership recruitment, we now have a party to the process. So for me, the, 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 the students should stay at home for two weeks so that they can participate in getting leaders who will give due attention to education. But I, I'd like to find out from you, do, do you think that the response of the government to this is, uh, you know, because they listen to the cry of Nigerians or it's just the draconian attitude of the government? Well, the way the government has done it is in a very draconian way. But what I mean is that they are trying to achieve something good using the wrong tactics. So for me, I would but, rather but, but, but not was look this at the not, fact that... Was this not an outcry? Because if you followed the conversation, including in various, I mean, different media spaces, whether the social media, uh, you know, every other media space, and the people everywhere, it felt like that was exactly what the people wanted. Let the schools be short so that the children or the students can come home and be part of the elections. So what exactly are we saying? Is it that, you know, the government just decided to be, because it's their nature, they just decided to say, hey, or they were heeding to the cry of the people? Well, I, I, I don't understand. I, I will not say what is actually the main factor that the government considered. But it will look as if they were uh, acting under pressure. Since this notice has come late, this notice is coming just two weeks to the election. If the government on its own volition was planning this, it's something they should have been talking about but probably like a year ago, from some months ago to say, during the election, universities will close. And that would have given universities the opportunity to plan their program to take those two weeks into consideration. But mercy, what I'm saying here is that regardless whether government is acting under pressure uh, from the outcry or government is acting on its own volition, I am happy that students will be able to participate in this electoral process. This is the only thing that Nigeria needs. But, but, need what's, leadership. The, but what's the guarantee? Yeah. I mean, just like GDA had raised, what, what exactly is the guarantee? Because it's not compulsory. I mean, it's, it's possible that the students can still go home and still not be part of their elections. But uh, let's, you know, quickly... Okay, as so if I, want to say, if I want to say something about that, there's a reason why universities are worth first class for 70% uh, uh, mark. You know, you cannot get it all. So if we have maybe 2 million uh, students and only about a million participate in the electoral process because they now have that time, it is better than if they were at school and they did not participate. All right, GJ. This election. This election will not uh, Jason, like I know that you're itching to say something. Go ahead uh, as we coast this, this conversation election, now. Uh, this election will not solve Nigerian problem. That's the reality. Western democracy has not solved the problem of poverty. It has not solved the problem of inequality. It has not even solved the problem of education. Globally, you can look at the global index. In actual sense, society where they don't even have elections are more developed than society where they have elections. We have seen from evidences that the theocratic monarchy of Middle East has even brought more development than Western democracy we are talking about. 
So the, them coming home to vote in this election will not stop us from going on strike. In 1999, as we went on strike, 2000, 2001. 1999, we had the election as we went on strike. 2003, we had the election as we went on strike. 2007, 2011, 2015, 2019, 2023. All of them made promises towards that election that they will solve educational problem. Which problem have they solved? As far as I am concerned, it is just being a plain, plain to the gallery when we think that election will solve problem because the same issue. You spoke about in 1999, and the same issue we are talking about now. If you look at the campaigns even of developed democracy, Western democracy, it is the same issue. The homelessness problem in California, particularly in San Francisco, they have it in Dallas, in, 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 in Texas. So that's why some of us have even argued that is there any need for us to, have, to practice this expensive Western democracy? And you look at the amount of money we vote for the election, and we look at the kind of disruption and division that Western democracy bestow on our society, on our people, is is a food for thought for every one of us. But to think that this the student going home to vote for this election will solve the educational problem, it's, it's I, I don't believe so because we have not we have not seen them All right. collected what will be their programs for education. Let anybody tell me the leading candidates. What's their plan for us? What are, what's, their, what's their major plan for education and for us? Except that we'll be schools, we'll be schools, we we'll do this, we we'll do that. That's not education. Education is about looking at the needs of your society and developing your curriculum to meet those needs and creating an enabling environment that will ensure that once these students leave school, they will be capably employed or create employment. It is not about certification. Education is not about certification. Or citing schools and building infrastructure. It's beyond that. Okay. Jide, uh, we probably have to talk about, I mean, you and I would have to talk about this, whether on air or, or off air. Uh, you have mentioned Western democracy. Is it that we should be able to come up with our kind of democracy? I mean, uh, all of this is uh, very doable, I think. I uh, would have this conversation some other time, but thank you so much for making our time uh, out of your busy schedule to be with us this morning. We appreciate you. It's a pleasure to be with you and Nick. Thank you. Nick from Abuja. This is Gide from Lagos. <laughs> if you... Uh, uh, Mercy, I think I, I would like to be part of that conversation. With well, how, whenever we're going to have that conversation, whether it's yes, on I, air I would like to because of... the Western democracy she's talking about is where our youth are jacking to. So yes, uh, they have their issues, but then they are better than what we are. They are not dealing with power failure. They are not dealing with bad roads. They are not dealing with uh, uh, rundown healthcare. You know, there's something that they are getting, which is making our youth to jack back there. So oh. we too, we need the basics. <laughs> We will, we will have that conversation in no time. Uh, Nika Gule, thank you as well for being part of the show. And we wish you the very best. Thank, thank you very much, Nigerians. It's two weeks to time. Two weeks. Let's step up. We must do it. 25th of February. Yes. Well, that's the size of it on Off the Press. We take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at uh, our first conversation right here. Well, the CBN uh, seemed to be a threat to the elections. That's according to the National Assembly. We'll be having that conversation with Ambrose Ipoke right here. Stay with us. Good morning. <laughs>